Captionator version 2.1 is finally here, and it's got a whole lot of upgrades that's gonna make your editing life a whole lot easier, especially Whisper 3 Turbo, which makes transcriptions so, so much faster. So let's get right into it. Now, if you've used Captionator before, it works pretty much the same, but with a bunch of nice refinements but there's a couple settings you're gonna to wanna to change. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your settings, or you can hit command comma like you can on most Mac apps. Under the download models, you're gonna to wanna to go and delete any models you currently have. Now, if you have a very slow internet connection, this can take a while to re-download them, but it's definitely gonna be worth it. Now, not all the models have changed, but you're gonna to wanna to go and clean them out anyways, because there's been a bunch of new additions. The main one is that we've actually dropped support for Core ML. Now, Core ML was always giving us problems. Sometimes the transcriber wouldn't start or would be kind of clogged up with other programs. That's all gone away. We've moved over to the Metal Engine, which is much, much faster. So you're gonna wanna delete any of the existing ones. So you can see here, it says remove. You're gonna wanna click that remove and it'll get rid of it. And at the very bottom of the screen, this use the clean button to remove core ML models, you're gonna to wanna to click that. And that'll get rid of all the old core ML stuff and save us, save us some disk space. Then you're gonna to wanna to click download and download the latest version of the model you wanna use. Generally, I'm gonna recommend you use Turbo unless your computer can't handle it. Uh, Whisper 3 Turbo is so much faster than all the older versions and it is very, very accurate. It's absolutely worth just going straight to the version 3 Turbo. Now, Turbo is only available in the large model. So if you have a slow computer or don't have a lot of RAM, then you might not be able to run it, but most computers can run the Whisper 3 Turbo model. Now I'm running a fairly fast internet connection here, a three gigabit connection, but these are very, very large language models. So it's gonna take a little while to actually download them. So once the model's downloaded, make sure your model is selected here large language model version three turbo. One of the big upgrades in 2.1 is a verified downloader. In older versions, you were able to download models that had corruption or had moved around and it looked like they were installed, but they actually weren't. That can't happen anymore with the new verified downloader. So you're gonna be much better off. So now that it's downloaded, you're gonna go and select your model, whichever one you want. As I say, the V3 turbos, the one you're gonna want. Now there's a bunch of nice new settings in the preferences. For instance, there's the default frame rate now. Usually you're not gonna need that. It, Final Cut is able to tell Captionator what frame rate it should be working in, but in some rare cases, it, it doesn't, and then it can produce some really weird results for you. So here's a nice way to set it to whatever you normally work in. I normally work in 24, but you can set it to whatever frame rate you, you normally work in. From the Preferences panel, the other new additions is the Show Corrections, which lets you modify your corrections that apply both to your captions as well as your titles, which is a just kind of a nice quality of life. The built-in editor has been completely rewritten from scratch and it should have any crashing issues solved. Next up is enhanced alignment, which is enabled by default on all machines. This uses a much more accurate algorithm to align all the text with the timing of your voice. It's still not perfect, but it is quite substantially better. And the last new setting I wanna show you guys is threading. Now threading can make your transcriptions even faster. By default, it uses a single thread, which means it's able to run at about 1x speed. But if you set this to a higher value, like 2 or 4, or on my machine, all the way up to 12, it'll actually run up to 12 times faster than it would with a single thread. Now, there is a few problems with this. For short videos, it actually takes a little bit longer to start up, and it ends up actually taking more time to run than if you just leave it on a single thread. Now, the other problem is in the way it works where it chunks the audio into individual pieces. So say you have a 15 minute audio chunk and you split into three pieces with three separate threads. At that interface point at five minutes and 10 minutes, the transcriptions are actually gonna be quite substantially less accurate just at that, that one second that it's switching over. So in general, for very short clips, I would say leave it off, leave threading at one. But if you're doing a podcast where it's maybe an hour or two hours long, turn up the threads. It can actually speed things up quite a lot and you might only have a couple words to correct. So now let's go check the speed of Whisper 3 Turbo. This is a video I did a few weeks ago and we're gonna send this off to Captionator and see how it handles it. And click next, we're using the Turbo model. So let's put a counter on screen as soon as we see that transcription window and it's done. All one minute long video done using the largest language model that we have. Now from here, I pretty much don't do anything. I just click generate and send it back over to, to Final Cut. Go put that in the Stearman. And I'm gonna keep both because I transcribed it before. And 
copy and paste. And last time I transcribed this using the same process, I'd made absolutely no changes. It figured it out, got it sorted, put it all in the right timing, perfect. Now the other change I wanna show you guys is the updated editing panel. So you remember that setting where it says show corrections. If that's on, when you click the edit button, it's gonna give you this new panel here, this corrections tab. And what you can do is you can change text in here and it'll be reflected in the titles and the captions. So let's go over here and let's assume it misheard me when it said, uh, this is a 1942 Boeing Stearman. Let's say it was an Airbus Stearman and misheard me, Airbus Stearman. Now, when you click back over to titles and scroll down, you'll notice it didn't change. It's all right. All you have to do is click the refresh button at the top right because it knows not to make changes until you've said you wanna make those changes. It's important because we don't wanna lose any changes you've made. Click refresh. And there we go. This is a 1942 Airbus Stearman. Now, if you want to change all your titles or timing, you just click back over into the titles over here on the left, adjust your words, say we only want sentences that are five words long or more. And we always want, say, three lines. Then we hit the refresh and there it goes. It's got that all solved. And one thing is just a kind of reminder is that the titles tab up here only affects titles. It doesn't affect the captions. And the captions tab only affects the captions. So if you edit, over here and it's not making a change, double check that you're editing in the right tab. Now there's also been some changes over on the motion template side of things that let you basically create whatever you want for motion templates. There's been a few little changes and a few little tweaks to make things a little bit better, but I'm making a full tutorial on how to actually use that setting because it is incredibly powerful. You can do almost anything you want with titles, any style you want, any colors, any movement, whatever you want. This is the most powerful way to edit uh, custom titles in Final Cut or any other program. So I hope you enjoy version 2.1 of Captionator. Go check out the Discord where we have people uploading new titles and new captions. I'm gonna be uploading some with the tutorials as well and happy captioning.